The remote northern hills may be the last place not swept up in Thailand's rapid modernization in recent years. So-called hill tribe people, chiefly the Akka, occupy these forested lands. They migrated from China and Burma over the past century and have lived largely isolated, with subsistence farming and indigenous religious traditions uninfluenced by the Buddhist traditions of Thailand. The Akka's introduction to the modern world came about four decades ago through Christian missionaries. Missionaries created a script for the Akka language and translated parts of the Bible. This school in the city of Chiang Rai was founded in 1957 for tribal children by Cecil Carter, an American Baptist missionary. Education, reading, writing and awareness about drugs and HIV are all part of the curriculum here. So is Bible study, in class and in the dormitories where most children are housed. Converting tribal people to Christianity was the central goal of the early missionaries, often to the neglect of the pressing poverty and socioeconomic problems. It reflected the core evangelical belief that accepting Jesus Christ is one's only path to salvation and eternal life. The, the catchphrase I heard on a regular basis in my early missionary career was, why take the time to straighten out pictures in a burning building? What's more important, a person who's going to spend eternity in heaven or a person who will have justice here on earth but die not having, ever having heard the message of Jesus? It's only really been in the last 15 years, I would say, evangelical Christians have become very interested in more holistic mission. How many churches are Scott Morrow teaches at Wheaton College near Chicago. It is the alma mater of Billy Graham and many evangelical missionaries. Morrow says most new aspirants feel they cannot ignore the immediate social, economic, or public health context. I think those things go hand in hand in a way that if I <clears throat> go to a, an impoverished place and speak to people who are dying from tuberculosis, but I don't and I speak to them about Christ and how, how loving Christ is and um, tell the message of salvation, but I don't help them in some way, get them to a hospital or give them medicine of some kind. I don't think that I'm doing the full package. In Chiang Rai, Principal Weichai says scripture, though encouraged, is not mandatory. Today's successors to the early American Baptist missionaries, like Chuck and Ruth Fox, say their work is mainly to help tribal villages adapt to living in a globalized world, improving agricultural methods, for example, or developing a handicrafts business. In their home, Ruth Fox employs and contracts with dozens of Akka women to sell their sewing crafts in Thai cities and in the United States. The foxes say they take pains not to force their beliefs on anyone or link them to their work. We do not tie it to any kind of strings attached. And usually it's a matter of building relationships with people and then they might ask us, why are you doing this? You can say, you know, I've come here. Um, this is a part of an expression of my faith to help you uh, with water project or with uh, planting coffee. So I think um, just simply making that statement. Um, is, is enough. Another big issue is whether the work of Christian missionaries undermines or enhances Akka culture. Some critics are uneasy even with the low-key approach like the foxes. They come in and do development work first, then they bring in religion afterwards. Atu Pocher runs an organization trying to preserve the Akka way of life. The Akka way of life is very connected to their belief system, and when you change their belief system, you totally change their way of life. One example he cites is this village, which the headman says has been divided by Christian missionaries. The Americans showed a video about Jesus. The Taiwanese, Koreans came in and distributed food, canned fish, salt, things like that. We'd lived together for many years. Then religion came into it, and the people who decided to convert mostly did it because they saw the rewards. They were arguing, my religion is better than yours. At issue are traditional beliefs and practices, like the ceremonial spirit gate at the village entrance, built to ward off evil spirits. 
The statues of the male and female figure are representing people, and they're standing guard to make sure no disease or anything else enters the village. It's a sacred thing, just for the people in the village to feel safe and protected, to ward off evil and keep the community safe. About four miles away, a group from the village who have converted formed a new community. No spirit gate here. Instead, there's a new church. <laughs> Pastor Tasang Shepakun says the gate is a symbol of spirit worship. He says that, along with the tradition of ancestor worship, is not compatible with Christianity, which recognizes only one God. And also ancestor worship. You have to sacrifice a pig or a chicken if you're sick, and it will heal you. But when you're a Christian, you have to believe in Jesus. He died for us, and there's no need to sacrifice anything. When I lived in the old village, there were a lot of restrictions. When you did something wrong, you had to sacrifice an animal. Here, I can talk to the pastor instead for advice. Life is a lot easier. Many Akka cite such practical reasons for their conversion. Animal sacrifices place heavy burdens on people struggling to get by as their forest resources dwindle. Missionaries offer know-how, things to help adapt to a modernizing world. And that modernization, more than any missionary activity, is a threat to hill tribe traditions, says Wheaton College's Professor Moreau. If missionaries stand back and do nothing, these cultures are going to be impacted by outside forces in, in quite strong ways. So the question the missionary has to ask himself or herself, what forces do I want those to be? Do I want them to be forces of the gospel in its whole form, relevant in the framework of the culture, or do I want these forces to be multinational corporations or economic systems or radio or television or uh, videos that are deeply impacting people, whether or not I want them to. One change Moreau finds encouraging across mission countries is that the leadership of local churches is increasingly local. He says it signals a maturing, diverse, global church. By some estimates, up to 40% of Akka now call themselves Christian, and many of them say their new faith will help preserve Akka culture. I feel like uh, to be Christian meaning you're proud to be Aka because God created you to be Aka and you can use your own language to sing, to worship Him and uh, to be Aka. And writing, uh, you have Aka script that uh, missionary help uh, to construct. There's no question the Aka way of life will see substantial change in the years ahead and the church will have a substantial role in that change. But both missionary and Akka church leaders insist that that future church will be far less missionary and far more Akka. For Religion and Ethics News Weekly, this is Fred DeSam Lazaro in the Hoi San Akka village in northern Thailand.